Hello, hello. I'm so glad to see everybody today. Welcome to Lipedema Wellness Conversations with Gail. That's me and friends. And our friend today is the amazing, wonderful Dr. Leslie Keith. And I am so glad to see her. Um, hi, Leslie. How are you doing? Hi, Gail. Thanks for having me. Oh, my gosh. And this is not the first time I've had you today. <laughs> <laughs> and, and nor even the first time that we've been together today. <laughs> no, I mean, it's like, well, wait a minute. We've been together, what, three or four times already today? <laughs> we are we are very busy. Um, Leslin has had, had several um, presentations, live talks, those sorts of things. So, Leslin, um, I know that you are the Director of Research for Lipedema Project and the president of the board for Lipedema Project. But what else can you tell our viewers about who you are? <laughs> well, and I'm also a consultant with Lipedema Simplified as well. Um, do That's And just true. do a, a bunch of stuff with, with you, of course. Um, I just felt like, I feel like we've been working together forever, Gail. <laughs> I know, isn't it crazy? It's only been a few years, but yeah, it's, we've been doing a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and just so, and really, you've been part of just this amazing um, journey of learning about lipedema uh, in particular, but really about the lymphatic system and lymphedema and, you know, all these conditions. Um, I, I think our understanding of them all has radically changed in the last three, four years. So it's been amazing. I, I remember joining in on webinars and things when I first, like 2019, when I first discovered that there might be something uh, that I wanna listen to from Less Than Keith, <laughs> right? I mean, someone says, have you ever heard of Less Than Keith? And I was complaining about being a slow loser. Uh -huh. And um, they, they, it was a full picture, you know, like a before and after, and oh, look, the legs didn't change. And they said, have you heard of Less Than Keith? And that was in 2019. I think that's and when my first book came out. Yeah, with that. and I got your book, oh. and um, but I went through denial. Mm -hmm. No way. <laughs> That's not me. That's not me. Uh, not only is it not me, I wasn't going to deal with one more, one more thing. Yeah. However, um, so at that beginning of that, I had no diff. I had no idea. People were asking me as soon as I started my journey, "What's the difference between lipedema and lymphedema?" And I would just go, "Uh, lipedema is about." is a fat disorder and lymphedema is a lymphatic disorder. <laughs> that's, all I could, that's all I knew. I knew nothing, right? Mm -hmm. And I know so much more now. And so today we, we wanted to really talk about the lymphatic system. Yeah, yeah, because it's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, in fact, you said, can we talk about this amazing system that we have, our lymphatic system? So Lesson, if you were going to break down, I mean, I don't even know how to begin to discuss what the lymphatic system is. How would you start to talk to somebody who is all new to this? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I would talk to them about uh, from the perspective of what the lymphatic system does. And I think that there is this perception that lymphatic system is just kind of this passive pathway of removing fluid and waste material from the tissues. It's kind of just a passive conduit that kind of um, gets fluid and material out of the system and then gets it back to the blood that the circulatory system, which does the real work. And, and that is really not all that the lymphatic system does. Yes, it is involved with waste removal and, and getting excess fluid out of the tissues. Yes, but there is so much more that it does. And what's more is that it's not really a passive system. This is a system that really um, works. It's actively, I mean, the little, uh, the, the larger vessels of the lymphatic system actually have smooth muscle that contract and pump oh. the fluid along. So um, not the smaller, like little capillaries that go to every little cell in your body, but the larger main vessels actually can contract because it doesn't have a heart to pump it along, but these vessels pump. It is truly amazing. So it is an active system, but because it's clear, 
you know, you, you just can't see it with the naked eye very easily that it really is ignored. It's kind of just, oh, it's a backup system. It just kind of helps us out when we need it. But no, this is so vital in so many ways that I, I'm trying. It's my crusade is to get people to understand how important the lymphatic system is and that we really got to pay attention to it. Right. And and I know that for those of us with lipedema, we get all excited about our lymphatic system because we think of swelling. Mm -hmm. Right. And that that is if our lymph, I mean, we do manual lymph drainage to help with the swelling. But it's not just that we have a sluggish lymphatic system. I mean, our lymphatic system is working all the time, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that Kelly Bell had said is that without the lymphatic system, we would just starve to death because it actually takes nutrients to where yes. it needs to go too. It's part yes. of our- One of the other major um, jobs of the lymphatic system is the delivery of nutrients. So we think of it only as removing waste. No, it actually picks up nutrients from your intestines. It travels through a main pathway, the, the thoracic duct up your trunk and delivers those nutrients to the blood system. And, and so you can imagine if you have any impairment or damage or trauma to that system going from your intestines to the blood, um, you're going to be like Kelly said, starving, you're going to be missing some essential nutrients. Right. And, and so in what ways, I mean, how does our lymphatic system get damaged or compromised? So th there's a lot of ways. And so unfortunately, and it's amazing, you know, that th there's so many ways that you can get hurt, but the human body is actually pretty amazing and it, it helps to compensate and it does things to to um, to allow us to keep going despite these injuries or assaults to our various body sy sy uh, systems. So that's kind of, I wanted to talk about that as well. So let's talk about how could you have a problem with that one function of your lymphatic system of actually getting stuff out of the intestines and delivering where it needs to go. Because specifically in the lymphatics, it gets your fatty acids, it gets cholesterol. Remember, cholesterol is in every cell of your body. We need that to hold our cell walls. We need it to build hormones. So it delivers fatty acids, cholesterol, uh, ketones, um, fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K. You're not getting any of those if you have a problem with your, um, your central lymphatic system of your trunk um, or a problem with the gathering system at your intestines. So you look at someone who may have various uh, GI disorders, your lymphatic system of your intestines could be a, play a crucial role in what's happening with that disorder. For instance, celiac, um, colitis, um, irritable bowel syndrome, ulcerative colitis. The lymphatic system is a big part of this and, and um, it, it needs to be able to work properly to be able to absorb those nutrients that we just talked about and deliver them where they need to go. We're also finding out that any surgery that you have to your trunk, mm. uh, gallbladder removal, uh, hysterectomy, bariatric surgery or liposuction of the trunk, um, heart surgery, could potentially be causing uh, an, uh, an issue to the lymphatics. But here's the good news. Like I say, our lymphatics are pretty amazing. And uh, one thing that um, they have found on a couple of different studies is that the um, lymphatic systems actually prefer fat. They prefer ketones and fat. And it actually... Um, ketones and fat can cause new vessels to be formed. That's called lymphatic. Oh, wow. Yes. Say that. Say that again, because I, I, I interrupted you at that word. Call it. Yes. Say it again. Lymphangiogenesis. Lymphangiogenesis. Genesis. Which... Genesis is is born. Pre you know. Is born. Yeah. Wait. And so, so um, they because um, fatty acids and ketones are so uh, loved by the by the, the lymphatics, it stimulates those um, cells that form the the vessel walls, 
and you you can have proliferation of lymphatic vessels with um, that. And so we're looking at now how do we if someone has, for instance, some surgery that that um, uh, like a hysterectomy and maybe it nicked some vessels. Well, um, uh, having a good diet with plenty of fat in it, good healthy fat, can actually promote, uh, along with all kinds of other good things, but it can promote healing to the lymphatic system because the lymphatic um, vessels actually prefer fat for fuel. Um, one study um, done by uh, Garcia Caballero and others, she presented at uh, one of our uh, conferences, um, she found that if, if those lymphatic vessels were exposed to sugar or glucose and, um, and as an option or given um, uh, ketones and fatty acids, they actually preferred to, even if they are given uh, both at the same time, they would use the ketones and the fatty acids. That was their preferred fuel. Wow. And, the, and it could promote um, lymphatic vessel generation. This and, is and very important. It's, it's so when we talk about, when we talk about things like um, ketones and fats being really good for our immune system, mm. it's because they really truly are because they, our lymph system loves it so much yes. that it wants oh, to use that how instead. About, how about this? There was also another study, and, and a lot of these studies are done on animals because we got to start there. So I hope that they will also be done on humans. But this one study on animals showed that lymphocytes, and those are um, immune cells that go out and kill the bad stuff, those were being transported faster when the um, the animal ate fat. And so they actually gave these rats um, olive oil. <laughs> and so when they ingested okay. olive oil, they had lymphocytes moving around their body more rapidly. And that's a, one of the, the big uh, functions of your lymphatic system is sending out to your whole body all these immune cells to search out, is there any bad stuff out here? Is there any pathogens, any microbes? And then they take those to the nearest lymph node to be dealt with. This so is so. It is amazing, huh? It is. It's it's just. I mean, I don't, we don't think about this. No. We we just take our we take it all for granted, and we we I guess we kind of brutalize our 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 lymphatic system if we if all we are eating sh like sugar and grains and right. and things like that, because we're just, we're just making it work harder and harder trying to get fueled properly. Oh my yeah. gosh. Well, let's, let's talk about those grains. Um, so, you know, there is a condition called celiac disease and that's when a severe, you absolutely cannot eat any wheat because you, your, your intestines are so messed up that you can't do it. But what happens is that, uh, celiac disease causes a degradation to the, the villi, the lining of your um, intestinal tract. And those lymphatic vessels that are picking up those vital nutrients are inside the villi. And so if you are flattening out those villi and destroying that lining, how does your lymphatic system get those nutrients? So you end up having not only a uh, um, a deficiency of all kinds of nutrients, but especially those vital fatty acids, essential fatty acids, ketones, cholesterol, uh, fat soluble vitamins, you end up having a vitamin deficiency of A, D, E, and K because your um, villi have been flattened and your lacteals, those uh, intestinal um, lymph, lymph vessels cannot get the nutrients. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So, so we you have can't have wheat, right? And right. I I do believe that um that there is a spectrum of difficulty with wheat. And I think that everybody is on that spectrum. And you might be okay, but I think you probably are at least on the intolerance side and not do too well when you eat wheat. Wheat is just not some it's not made for human consumption it damages our, our insides. And so, and it damages our ability of our lymphatic system to be able to do its jobs. 
And so I would tell people if, okay, you don't want to be do a ketogenic diet, at least don't eat any more wheat. That could be your okay. first and only thing. And you will be doing your body and your lymphatic system a huge favor by just not eating any wheat. Oh my gosh. And we need, we need people to know this. So many of us are, you know, we get, we don't understand the, the damage wheat does and, and that we have sick, it's like just a slow sickness, you know, we're just yeah. miser it's a miserable sickness. Yes. And so people who are hearing this for the first time, like me, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to share this video already <laughs> with, my, with, my, with the people that I love. Yes. Because yes. I know that wheat hurts me, but it makes my ankles swell up. Yes. Right. So yes. that's my, that's my, and it, and it hurts that knuckle right there. <laughs> so so you're, and I think that those, uh, actually those uh, symptoms far away from the site of your digestive tract are, it's lymphatic related. Your lymphatic system is compromised at the intestines. And so the rest of the system is on overload and it's not able to do its other job, which is to remove pathogens from the tissues, which is to keep the fluid balance. And so you end up getting pain, inflammation and swelling because your the whole lymphatic system in general becomes compromised because of, of the damage that's been done in your gut. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I don't have any words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and so I, I do believe that it, it really, it all comes down to this is an essential system. Of course, your, your body works together. It all works together and, and your body tries to overcome any insult to it that it can. And, and you know, we, we keep limping along and we actually do pretty well considering um, it, it does have ways of compensating, but let's let's do well by our lymphatic system and let's, let's make it easier on ourselves. You know, if right. we can do what we can to support the lymphatic system, we will we'll have a much higher quality of life. Oh my gosh. Um, and so, so less than, I'm so glad you're here telling us about this today, but you're going to be telling us about this uh, in about, Two weekends from now, right? Yes, because we're going to be at the at the the heart to heart. The um, let's see, fresh take on lipedema and lymphedema solutions. Our virtual conference, our um, our virtual event that we're having, March thirty one, April one and two. And I will be talking about this, but we're actually going to be having. Well, I think we're going to have what? like four CLT certified lymphedema therapists that are going to be talking about this type of thing. Oh, awesome. And I mean, because this is all, I mean, we, we act like it's new, but I think of what it is, is it just is, it's not new. It's just that nobody's talking about it. Yes. Right. And like you said earlier to me, you said that doctors don't really seem to either understand or want to understand about the lymphatic system because it's so not seeable, right? It's right. The fluid, I mean, we don't really see the lymphatic system. There are there are doctors who I mean I've seen videos. I think it's is it Dr. Chickley who yeah. he can tell which direction your lymph is flowing by touch and mm -hmm. it's so exciting. <laughs> I mean yeah. I love that. He's very but, intuitive, um, yes. Yes, but but for those of us who those of us walking around with a lymph system, you know, I guess all of us <laughs> have one. We don't we don't think too much about it. It, it, we just take it all for granted. And so learning about it, it's fabulous. And you're right, the, the heart to heart event that we have is um, a fresh take on lipedema and lymphedema solutions. And, and it's really a fresh take. We're, we're hoping to open a lot of eyes. I put in the chat, the, what we have down here at the bottom of our screen, I put in the chat, in the comments, the, um, the link to register for that. If you haven't been able to register yet, also, if you um, if you think about it, and you you think about somebody that you want to share this video with, because we're going to continue here in a minute, but think about somebody you want to share this video with. It's all you got to do is click on it again. This is recorded right to where you're watching it. You can share the YouTube video, or you can you can share the um, YouTube video on your Facebook page. Whatever you want to do with this video, mm -hmm. get it out there. Sit down and watch it with 
loved ones who you think, oh, maybe they're dealing with some of this stuff and they want to see this. Um, so with that, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and keep going, <laughs> Leslie. <laughs> what else is amazing about our lymph system? Well, um, I'm just looking at some some things that I shared this afternoon. I was speaking for a uh, virtual support group for uh, lipedema and lymphedema at UPenn. And one thing I was talking to them about, um, you know, we're looking at lipedema and lymphedema and how do you tell the difference between the two? Um, for me, a, a big eye-opening article for me was a, one that just came out last year, actually. And I've been dealing with these disorders for 20, over 20 years. But last year, there was this fabulous article that came out. Uh, it was called Tales of Fluid, Fat, and Fibrosis. And it was talking about how lymphedema and lipedema, two separate conditions, but they actually end up, the tissue actually ends up to be about the same with fluid, fat, and fibrosis. It's just that lymphedema starts with fluid and gets, it becomes uh, inflamed and we get uh, um, remodeling of the tissue with fibrosis and then you get fat deposits. Lipedema starts the other way. We start with fat deposits we get tissue remodeling with lots of fibrosis. We get that the tissue becomes inflamed and then we get fluid. And so they end up in the same place, but they come at it from two different directions. Interesting, uh, huh? And the lymphatic system is integrally um, involved in both of those. Um, although they are two different conditions, you know, lipedema um, definitely has, you know, more of easy bruising, hypersensitivity and pain. Um, it's very symmetrical with fat deposits, mostly on the lower body, but you can also have it in your arms and your trunk is typically unaffected um, versus lymphedema is typically asymmetrical. Even if you have it on both legs, it's pretty much going to be one leg bigger than the other. It doesn't have that hypersensitivity. Um, it, men and women both can get it. It doesn't have to be just women. Um, so, at, uh, you know, we have these, they're different, but then when we look at the tissue itself, they both have inflammation, fibrosis, fluid, and fat. Pretty remarkable. It is. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to sound maybe a little, I don't know, um, silly, <laughs> I guess. I look at somebody with lymphedema that I can see that's very noticeable to me. Mm -hmm. It looks, it looks painful mm -hmm. because of, because it just, it just looks like the skin is so tight and, you know, as, as a person with lipedema, and if I do have lymphatic issues, I, they're not, they're not, um, they're, they're not right pronounced. I look at somebody with, with like that, with very noticeable lymphedema and it does, it looks painful. And so when you say that, that it's not as sensitive to the touch, the way that lipedema is, but yet it's still the same thing. It's like fibrotic yeah. tissues, mm -hmm. um, fat, fluid, you know, um, and, you know, we can have a lot of variations in both conditions. Um, definitely, I've had many patients with lymphedema that did have a lot of pain. And I've had uh -huh. patients with lipedema who really had minimal pain. So, uh, you know, I think there's a range for each person. It depends on what interventions they've had um, and, uh, you know, other comorbidities that they may have. Um, so, um, it's, it you know, it's, that's where it becomes difficult, you know, to differentiate between the two conditions. And also if you have both at once or even, and even some other condition as well, you know, all that they, they tend to overlap and they blur. And so it's hard to see, okay, what is, you know, this symptom is with this condition and, and, you know, and it's not this, it's hard to tell sometimes. And so right. in that you and I in the know, 
you know, we know about these conditions and it's difficult for us. Imagine how it is for your physician who really has never even heard of lipedema. Right. Then it's really difficult for them. Right. And they, they don't have any, they have no way of knowing how to even direct you, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, and yet we're going, but wait, you're supposed to know, you're supposed to know this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So yeah. we get, that's one of the reasons we do these heart to heart events and we do the question answer, which reminds me, we do have a question answer coming up Friday. Um, mm -hmm. I want to put that in the private chat, um, in the private chat, in the chat. And I'm going to give you the, um, the link to that to sign up for a webinar. We're having a question answer on yeah, Friday. Is, um, oh, not, no, not I, Friday, Saturday. 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 Uh, at 4, 4 Eastern. p.m. Eastern. Here, let me pull that up. It's an amazing, it's an amazing, our word amazing is amazing this is today. Mm -hmm. It's called All About Lipedema and Lymphedema, Open Q&A with Laser Coaching, um, March 25th. That's Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to be there. I think Leslie's going to be there. I'm going to be there. Catherine's going to be there. And Siobhan is going to be there. And I'm going to put also that. have a special guest. Oh, we do. I we think might I know also who have it, a special guest. I yeah. think I know who it might be. Yeah. Um, so I'm putting that in the in the um, chat. And I'm sorry that I said Friday. Cross Friday off and put Saturday in. I'm <laughs> delete, I'm, delete, <laughs> delete, 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 delete. Just know that it's March 25th at 4 p.m. Eastern, and um, we're so excited for you guys to sign up for that. Um, Cindy's going to be there. If we take a look and see, we, we have several comments and we have people coming in, but we only got two loves, you know, come on know, guys, give us some love. love and, and give us some thumbs up. Yeah. Um, it looks like Cindy's here and Marilee is here. Those are, those are some familiar names. And then Bridget said, oh, wow, I've had four C-sections uh -huh. and a gallbladder removal. So when you're talking about things happening in our trunk, it got her brain thinking, looks yeah. like. So, um, and you're, you're looking at after those types of surgeries, do you have lots of abdominal bloating that just doesn't seem to go away? Um, do you have GI issues, you know, discomfort in your gut, um, cramping and stuff like that? Um, some people may develop some difficulty breathing. Um, so... The, these are some indications that you might have stuff going on. And, and one of the main things that we can do is feed ourselves nutrients that help our lymphatic system heal. Um, because we can come over these things depending on, um, you know, a lot of the very common surgeries like gallbladder removal um, usually are not a huge disruption to the lymphatic system. And they may be a temporary issue that can be overcome. But if you're going years and years and years after your surgery and you still have issues, then that's something that your your limbs, possibly your lymphatic system wasn't able to overcome. And we need to do more to, to help it. And one of those things could be eating well. Yeah. Um, Jamie had a question. Do you know if the lymph fat crosses the brain blood barrier causing white matter changes? So what an interesting question, because it's only most recently that we've discovered that our brain has a lymphatic system. We thought that there was nothing happening in the, the no lymphatics in the brain. Um, but now we do understand that there is, and there's a couple of different lymphatic systems in, in our brain. One is the meningeal one that's going in that subdural area um, around your brain, but then there's uh, there's also lymphatics that go into the brain parenchyma or the brain tissue. And so and, and that's more of a more of a passive thing. You can't really see tubes and vessels in that. But what's happening is that when you sleep, and this is why sleep is so important to get enough sleep, when you sleep, your brain tissue actually shrinks a little bit. And that, that shrinkage allows the, the lymphatics of your brain tissue to be more active. And so all of the um, 
the waste and uh, it, materials that, that gather in your brain during the day, this is the time that it needs to be cleared out. And it's done by your lymphatics. So you can, um, there was uh, several studies actually that showed a correlation between pre-existing sleep disorders and development of Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and other neurodegenerative diseases. So getting your sleep allows your, your um, lymphatic system to clean out your brain. But the other thing is, and, and what um, are, um, is it Julia? Uh, that asked which one? Asked the question, Jamie. It was Jamie. Jamie. Um, what Jamie is talking about? Does it cross the blood-brain barrier? Yes, your lymphatic system is actually delivering vital nutrients to your brain, and so we need to let that lymphatic system deliver that stuff and remove that waste, um, and clean out the brain while we sleep. So it is very important to brain health to have a healthy lymphatic system and to get good sleep. Okay, and I would think. That that's another issue when we eat wheat, why we might get wheat um, brain, what they call grain brain. Mm -hmm. You get yes. brain fog from eating grains. Yes. Um, if so because um, what the, your, your brain can actually produces its own insulin and it gets insulin resistance when we give it too much, too many carbs and too much glucose and stuff that we get from grain. So yes, you're giving yourself, uh, they're calling Alzheimer's type three diabetes. You're getting wow. insulin resistance to the brain. Wow. So here's another one from um, Patty. She says, there are times that I feel like I have current running through my body. I initially felt it was an electrical current, but now feel it could be my lymphatic system moving. Have you had anyone else notice this? So that is very interesting comment, Patty, and it very well could be. It could be lots of things because um, I've had patients tell me that during treatment, when I'm doing the, the manual treatment, manual lymph drainage is a gentle massage that helps move that fluid out of wherever it's collected. I've had patients tell me they can feel, it feels like a sensation of water flowing. I don't know if you've ever experienced this when you've had your treatment scale. Um, <laughs> all I know is I got to pee. So I, yeah, <laughs> but I don't like feel. I I um I feel a tingle. Yes, I feel in, like in, in the, like, like this. If she's working on your arm or something like that. You feel that, or in your legs, you can yes. feel that. So so it could be nerve endings. It could be actually that, I mean, Dr. Chickley, as you were describing earlier, he feels like he can feel um, where it's flowing and where it's obstructed and how to uh, divert it around obstruction. So, um, you know, there might be something to it. We, we absolutely, we just don't know for sure. Um, if you are feeling it while you're having doing a treatment, for instance, you're in your pump or you're getting manual lymph drainage, I'm going to take it as an indication that that something's happening and it possibly is good. <laughs> um, but if you're just sitting there and not doing anything and you feel that tingle, then I, I wonder, you know, you know, what is it that, that's that's causing this? And it, it may may be good, may may be not so good. We just don't know. Well, I know a lot of people will say, oh, after I get done with my vibration plate. Yes. Oh my gosh. It's like everything's itchy and everything's moving. It's tickling. Yeah. Know, yeah. It's tingling. It's like, yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and it makes me think, yeah, it's because things are flowing again, <laughs> you know. Um, Could be. Could be. Kath Kathy wants to know about what about knee replacement surgery? Um, causing a problem with the lymph set, lymph system. So, and, and that's an excellent point, Kathy. Um, so when you have any kind of surgery anywhere in your body, for instance, on your knee or elbow or ankle, you know, you're going to be cutting through lymphatic vessels, but mostly they're going to be um, the capillaries, which are the very tiny ones that go to every single cell. And they are able to repair very well, but while they're working on on repairing, they um, you're going to have swelling. 
because they've been cut. And it's just like, you know, you probably cut through some veins at, to get into your knee to do what needs to be done. And so, so that's, there's going to be leaks and stuff like that because they are um, trying to heal. Um, that is um, when you have some post-surgical swelling away from your trunk on your limbs, it's not as, um, it's not as urgent, I would say. When you have surgery to the trunk and you possibly have nicked one of those major lymphatic vessels in your trunk that are worried, that are really, they're working to drain excess fluid from the kidneys, drain excess fluid that are around the lungs, um, draining fluid coming from uh, the heart, um, you know, on the outside of the heart and, and draining that, um, picking up vital nutrients from the intestines and, and trying to get that to your blood system. Um, those, um, when those become injured, it's a little bit more urgent and can cause um, more severe symptoms. You can have, like I was saying, some GI upset, difficulty breathing, um, a lot of discomfort with just abdominal bloating, um, things like that. So it's it's something that we need to really focus on when when we get those kinds of symptoms in our trunk. Yeah. So so Leslie, I'm gonna we're gonna talk we're gonna reach out and do a couple more questions. We have a lot. Um, but I really, we can't, <laughs> we can't answer all questions tonight. Um, but you, we will be talking about it, holding Q and A on Saturday, and holding, and there'll be Q and As yes. on during the the heart to heart event. Like but, I say, there's going to be a lot of people talking about lymphatics at the uh, our three day event, um, and so consider joining us for that because you will have a lot of your questions answered by coming to that event. Yeah. So one from Eugenia, is there a reference for the foods that will heal our lymphatic system? Mm. So, um, so what we are learning right now is we're learning that some foods overburden our lymphatic system and, and other foods are healing and supportive of our lymphatic system. And I will tell you that um, the foods that tend to overburden our lymphatic system are carbohydrates. Um, and so trying to minimize your exposure to carbohydrates and uh, plants, plant foods all have carbohydrates in them. They also have some proteins and some fats, but they, they all have carbohydrates in them. And so trying to figure out which of uh, those plant foods are you okay with? So even though they might be a very low carbohydrate food, like for instance, nightshade vegetables, um, eggplant and peppers, people eat that on a ketogenic diet all the time, but they may cause inflammation in you. And so we're, that's overburdening your lymphatic system. So trying to figure out which foods cause that, that pain, that swelling, um, that bloating and avoiding that. And then finding the foods um, that will support your lymphatic system. And um, those are proteins and fats. And I will tell you that it's mostly animal source proteins and fats because plants tend to come along with their um, nutrients. They also come with some anti-nutrients. They come with some nutrients that can be inflammatory. And so if we look at our animal sourced foods that we feel okay with eating, we like how they taste, um, and that's gonna be individual to everybody. Um, I, I know we have a lot of, uh, of people in our group that um, are vegetarian, but they're okay with eating eggs. Well, you're going to get some good healthy fat that's going to to support your lymphatic system um, with eggs. You might be really good with eating fish like um, salmon. It's going to have fat that's going to support your lymphatic system. So think about um, those animal sources that give you the um, all of your essential amino acids in a package that is easily digestible and absorbed by humans. Um, so it takes a much smaller amount. Like I can get 
protein from quinoa, but I have to eat this much of it <laughs> in order to get enough. And, and I can just eat a little tiny bit of salmon. I only have to have this much of it. So um, I can get all my nutrients in a much smaller, easily absorbed package. Um, and I, I can um, feel much better and support my lymphatic system. So think about those foods that you seem to do well with. Um, a lot of women are experimenting with dairy and, and thinking, okay, that is a nice source of fat, but maybe I don't feel so good when I have dairy. So, um, so that is a wonderful source of fat, but don't have it if you don't feel good after you have it. <laughs> after you have it. Find another way to get yourself the, the proteins and the fats that you need. Um, that's what I, my big suggestion would be is to, to try to keep your carbohydrates low. As Ben Bickman says, control for carbs, prioritize protein and fill in with fat. So we're, we're trying to eat. I think you were talking about this before, Gail. It's just whole foods, real foods, mm -hmm. nothing packaged. Right. Um, we find that that um, we can get some very delicious food um, as close to um, what we could grow in our backyard or on the farm or, you know, um, as, as we possibly um, can get. Um, and, and let the let the packaged and the food industry foods, let them go a bit and see what real whole foods do for you. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the, I guess what my thought is, is you can't really go wrong with, with it. You can go really wrong with, with processed foods. Yes. Right? And, but if you can read all the ingredients and, you know, yeah. and then those sorts of things. You know what are, those words are. Right. Yeah. There are, the, you know, there are some things you can, you can hold up, like I can hold up two jars of pasta sauce. Right. And mm -hmm. one, I can't read all the ingredients and the other one I can. Mm -hmm. So which one will I choose? I'll choose the one where I can pronounce all the ingredients and I know what they are. I right. can actually visualize the plant or whatever that it comes from. Right? Yes. I can. Yes. And so. Um, we know so, that, you know, a lot of people when they start on keto, they, they go to the store and there's all these keto bars and keto snacks and all this stuff that says keto on the package. But um you know, really look at those packages and the ingredients carefully, because just because it says keto or low carb, it doesn't mean that it's going to react very well with you personally. Right, right. And we're going to be talking more about these things at our um, at our three our three day event. We call it the heart to heart. But this Saturday is the is the free webinar. I just stuck the the um, link in the comments again and you you can get some of your questions answered this saturday or you can or you can do both you know go to go yeah. to the um the uh, let me grab the next the other one and yeah. i'm going to put it in here too the heart to heart and leticia um, you will um for instance your question about what you could can you do about sugar cravings that will definitely be answered. And I'm going to tell you one little tiny hint, um, but there'll probably be more um, at, at the Q&A coming up this Saturday and our, our Heart to Heart event the following weekend, um, pickle juice. So if you like pickles, because don't do this if you don't like pickles. <laughs> and we're but talking, we're not talking those sweet pickles. Yes. We're talking dill, dill, dill pickle pickles. juice, dill, dill pickle juice. Um, and I think it's because it's full of, well, the vinegar is a short chain fatty acid, which I think is satiating. And, and so your body is getting some wonderful nutrients. And, and let me just say too, that short chain fatty acids bypass your lymphatics and go straight to your liver. And so you're getting a nutrient that is bypassing your lymphatics and avoiding burdening your lymphatics. So so people who have sugar cravings, and Gail will tell you this because she's done it. If you drink some pickle juice, it helps you get over the sugar cravings. It, it does. And <laughs> not only it does. And I've discovered that if I have a sugar craving, it means I need something. And it's usually, and, and pickle juice helps, but it seems like I usually need salt. 
Yeah. And, and maybe, is, I mean, isn't there salt and pickle juice too? There is. Yes. <laughs> and I've actually cool. made my own pickle juice. Oh, perfect. you know, because you, you can, um, it's not like you go and squeeze a pickle and that's pickle juice. I mean, we're talking about the brine, right? we're talking about pickle brine, but we yes. call it pickle juice. But so I, we, we make our own pickle juice and you can, you can make it uh, kind of fun. You can make it spicy, you know, you can throw some, a jalapeno or two in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay. and, and I'll take you the can, inflammation with that one. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can, you can. Um, and like Patty says, how much, how much pickle juice do you need? Amazingly enough, <laughs> I just drink it out of the jar. I yeah, I mean, you're, you're talking about a couple of tablespoons. Yeah, a couple yes. of swigs. I just suck lot. it, and I'm like, okay, I'm done. And then yeah. I put it away. And I, I do. Uh, what's great is I love to, I love to follow pickle juice with fresh water. Mm -hmm. Because it because the, the the you know like a filtered water out of um, you know my my regular water that I normally drink and I taste I'm like oh now that tastes sweet and fresh and stuff but other times the other thing about pickle juice is you know that cramp that pulls your big toe up and tries to attach it yes. to your knee in the middle of the night yes. <laughs> you know the pickle juice just a couple swigs of that pickle juice and that toe calms down. So, um, yes, and it's okay to eat the pickles, too. Mm -hmm. The dill pickle, yeah, dill pickles yeah. are just, they're wonderful. <laughs> you know what, I, I, it's one of those foods that I always, I look at them, I smell them, I go, oh, boy, I bet that is so good. And I keep trying it, and I go, nope, still don't like it, and I'm so disappointed. But if you like pickles, this is a wonderful fix. And I want to just, I know we have to uh, wind up, but I, I want to just uh, answer a question by Julie Rosa, too, that she was, um, when she was going back to the sleep discussion, and she was wondering oh, yes. about, does it need to be deep sleep or any stage of sleep? And actually, Julie, the best work by your lymphatics is done during that deep sleep, that REM sleep. And so if you're one of those people that gets woken up every 45 minutes because you have sleep apnea or something like that, you are not getting to that sleep that you need for your lymphatics to do their work in the brain. So I really, um, if, if you are having a lot of disrupted sleep, I highly recommend getting a sleep study and they can do them. You could do a home study, um, which you're more likely to sleep, actually sleep when you do a home study. Right. Um, so I really recommend following up on that. This is for your brain health. Yeah. And, and, and your entire health. Yes. Um, your so entire many health. ways. Yes. So I'm going to put less than address up across the bottom again. It's less than at lipedema mm -hmm. Um, she, she comes to us every, um, first and third Thursday of the month. I shouldn't say every, almost, almost most of them. <laughs> yeah, I missed almost February most because we were, I was presenting <laughs> right. at Low Carb Denver, but right. usually I'm, I'm there um, with Gail. She's behind the scenes doing all the tech stuff first and third Thursday um, where I talk about the latest research that has a relevance to uh, lipedema. And so I'm happy to have people join me there and, and make your suggestions on what research you would like me to uh, review. I, I do have a backlog of about 10 papers that I, I need to get done, um, but I'm always looking for, for more. Who knows, and, yours might move up in the queue. <laughs> <laughs> right, so so feel free to, to email her um, with, this, with suggestions or questions. Come see her um, this coming Saturday at our Q&A and see her on, um, the three-day event, the Heart to Heart, a fresh take on lipedema and lymphedema solutions. That's March 31st, April 1st and 2nd. And all of those links are in the in the comments. And with that, Leslie, is there anything that you would like, um, if you could have a message echo around the world, what would it be? I would have everybody to know that a healthy lymphatic system means a healthy you and do whatever you can to support your lymphatic system. Movement helps pump the lymphatic system. Deep breathing helps pump the lymphatic system and eating 
um, healthy supports lymphatic system. So support your lymphatic system and your lymphatic system will support you. Oh, I love it. I love it. And with that, everyone, um, please know that we are here. You are not alone. Um, there's hope and we're here to, to um, support you all the way. Have a great night.